Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to show you guys how I made this sequin prom dress. This dress is linked on my website and this is a beginner friendly tutorial. So here you see I start with my fabric on fold and then I just place my bodice and then I place my skirt pattern on top. And this paper, this is like the flare that gives it the mermaid gown look. I got this pattern off of Etsy. I'll have it linked in the description box. And then I'm just cutting and I'm adding a little seam allowance around the armhole and the neckline because I did not include it in the pattern. And I do have to hem these areas. So this is my back piece. And I'm just cutting out that flare. And as you can see, my paper kind of, you know, went over so I kind of just freehand cut it, but you see me doing now. And you can see on the side that triangle star is performed, and I'm going to use that as my go day piece. And now I'm cutting up my back center seam so I can add my zipper here later. So now I'm going to hem my armholes and my neckline. Um, I just flip it over and I do a double fold. And then I just pin it down. And you're going to see me continue to do that. I'm doing the same thing to the neckline as well, and then I'm gonna just take it to my sewing machine, and then I'm gonna just sew it with a, I believe I sewed it with a straight stitch right on that edge, and make sure the back stitch. And this is how it turned out a nice clean hem. And now here's my day piece. And I'm gonna just sew a zigzag stitch all the way down. Um, and I stayed close to that velvet edge just so I could have as much flare as possible. Cause I did only, um, I put this go date in the back. So I only used one go date instead of two, like you would see in my other videos. But yeah, so I had already sewn my zipper at this point and now I'm pinning my go date to those seams. So I have those openings and I'm starting at the bottom because my go day isn't that long. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna pin up on both sides. I know that may seem a little confusing, but if you go look at my other video, you can see how I did it on the sides and I'm just doing the same thing. So I continue to pin and then I go to the other side. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'm starting from the bottom and I'm working my way up. And then I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch. And as I mentioned, you know, this is sequin. I can't really use my serger, so I do back stitch a lot. And now as you can see, there's like a gap that I'm closing because there was space between my zipper and where I added my godet. So now I'm going in, you know, and closing that gap. Okay, and then here I'm working on my front piece, but I did not have enough fabric. I needed like an additional 10 inches of fabric. So instead of cutting out, you know, the top and the skirt at the same time, you know, together, I just cut my skirt separately. I pin my skirt. I'm still using that same flare piece. And then I just start cutting. And I'm going to leave a little bit of seam allowance at the top since now I have to attach my top to my skirt, which I didn't have to do at first. And you know, I'm still adding my flare, but I don't need another go day because I'm I'm only using it in the back and not on the sides. So now I'm using my little scrap pieces to try to cut a bodice out. And I'm not gonna add seam allowance here because you know I have cutouts and everything. So you see that velvet edge at the top? It doesn't matter because of the way my cutouts are. I don't even need that. So here's my front skirt laid out and here's my top and I'm gonna just flip my top over and I'm gonna pin that down. I'm gonna add my pins. And I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch. And again, I'm gonna just keep back stitching and all of that. So 
see I have my sketch here and I'm going to use this to help me with my cutouts. Um, so I'm using my pans to mark where I actually cut. Um, I probably wouldn't actually do this method again because I didn't really like the cutouts. Um, in the future, I would just do a pattern like I usually do. So you see me cutting my cutouts. And now here I am cutting my mesh piece and I'm using that same pattern, bodice, skirt. And since my cutouts kind of go past the hip, I do just cut this whole you know, front pattern just above the knee. And I'm using a rotary cutter because I'm not going to hem this. This is how my mesh piece was looking and I did fix the neckline later. So now I'm taking my sequin fabric and I'm pinning it directly onto the mesh. So I'm matching my armhole seam, my waist seam, my hip seam. I'm matching those up and I'm just pinning all the way around. And then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine. And here I did like a basting stitch. So a long stitch. Um, my stitch length was four. Just because I wanted to see how the cutouts looked before I really attached it. And I'm glad I did this because I did not like the cutouts. Um, I mentioned this in my shorts. I did not like it. So I went back in. I cut some more off. As you can see me doing here, um, I took a picture. I sketched where I wanted my cutouts on my iPad. But I cut way too much off this time. So I would definitely use a pattern. This freehand cutting thing, not my thing. Don't know why I'm doing it. So you see I had to take it apart. You know, take it off the mesh so I can redo my cutouts. So here I am pinning my mesh back down so that I can sew it. This is why I would recommend a basting stitch because it was really easy to take apart. Yeah, I cut a little bit too much off, but I just sewed that like a little piece back on and it was good. So this is me sewing. Um, and I'm not basting it this time because I'm a little more confident in how these cutouts look. And this is how it looks now. And it is a little revealing, but remember I'm adding appliques on top. So it is gonna cover it up a little bit. So here are my two appliques. I wasn't sure which one to use. I did do like a poll on Instagram and um, on my shorts, um, but I ended up going with the ones on the right. So here's how these appliques look when I got them. Um, it came on like mesh. I got this off of Etsy. I'm using my wood burner to cut it off the mesh. And I do cut those little flowers off. I didn't like those. It was it was too much. Too much of a hassle for me personally. <laughs> and this is me taking the ones on the left off. As you can see, I already have the ones on the right pin. So I'm going to use these little pins, the flathead pins, so I can sew it on my sewing machine. And I didn't want to break needles, so I didn't use those big pins. So I used these little pins. So I'm taking out the other pins, and I'm putting these in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But I'm going through the applique, through the mesh, back through the mesh, through the applique. Here I'm going through the applique, through the sequin, through the mesh. You know, I'm going through all those layers and back through because I do want to use my sewing machine. And I want it to stay in place. And I'm going to just continue to pin. And I'm using this quilting foot that I saw on TikTok. Um, and I also have this link in the description. And this made it much easier, much faster. It was actually very therapeutic for me. I enjoyed using this foot. So yeah, I'm just sewing all the way around, following the pattern that it already has. Back stitching, taking out my pins as I go. So I have the right side done, so now I have to do the left side, and this is me just pinning the appliques onto my liking. And then again, I'm going to use those flathead pins. So here I'm just pinning it on to see how I like it, and then I go in with the flathead pins. And then I'll do the same thing, taking it to my sewing machine, using that foot. And this is how it looked on the inside. And I'm cutting my threads off and all of that, making sure I got all my needles out. This is how the front of my dress was looking. And then I have my back on the table, the back of my dress on the table. And I'm going to just put my front piece on top. And I'm going to just pin the sides, the shoulder seams. 
you may notice that at the top my um the back piece is a bit like longer I'm gonna have it pinned further up because I didn't do a sway back adjustment so it was kind of like buckling in the back a little bit so I did raise my back shoulder seams and then I'm gonna continue to pin all the way down and then I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and sew the sides and the shoulder seams I did also do a basting stitch um, just in case I wanted to make sure that it fit my mannequin and then after I tried on my mannequin I just went back over those stitches um, with a shorter stitch and then I'm cutting out some more appliques these were appliques that I put on the bottom well right now they're just pinned on there because you know I want whoever purchases the dress to have the option to have them or not I am burning the mesh off these pieces as well and then I just pinned it to the bottom of the train just to see, you know, how it look. And this is how the dress turned out. Very cute and elegant. I love the dress. I'm glad I went with these appliques. So this is the first option. And then the second option has it with the appliques on the bottom. Again, this dress is for sale on my website. I'll have everything linked in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, everything. I